Okay, greetings. This is the English version of uh, my explanation of taxi services in El Paso, Texas. Again, Spanish is not my natural language. Uh, and I make no effort to spell correctly in Spanish. As long as the message gets out, that's the only thing that matters. And I'm not going to waste your time. So let me see here. Set this up to where I want it. Okay, wow, there we go. It wasn't that. Oops, here we go again. Just get it there. And then I will jump over here. Then I'll go over here to read. So basically, in El Paso, Texas, there are two areas where the majority of taxis are located. One of those areas is where I work, and that's 6th Street in El Paso, and South El Paso Street, directly in front of. Uh, the American custom that you're walking in from Juarez into El Paso, Texas, you will see taxis there. Okay. The other area is the airport, and I left some of the Spanish in there because I had done an earlier version in Spanish. Okay. Uh, as far as I know, there's still two companies using uh, dispatchers. <coughs> the city ordinances requires a two-way form of communication. That's a cell phone. Okay. I have my um, business website on uh, <coughs> Google Small Business and <coughs> and now I am partnered with Lyft okay let um, see uh, prices vary as of August 9th of 2017 because of the change in the code and all you have to do is read the law and the law very as I read it is very clear and it says that the taxi meter has to be consistent with the fare card and that the fare card has to be displayed for the customer. So as long as the fare card and the taxi meter are coincide, that driver is uh, compliant with the law. And that doesn't mean that every driver has to charge the same thing. It doesn't mean that every taxi company has to charge the same thing. It just means that the driver who is providing the service to the customer has to be honest with the customer by making sure that the taxi meter and the fare card are coincide. Okay, a lot of um, the attitude of some companies is that they need to tell their partners. We're not employees. Taxi drivers are not employees of taxi companies. We're partners. We pay them money. Okay. Now, if you're having a a problem in Six Street and El Paso with a driver. Every other driver is an option, okay? <clears throat> now, uh, to me, it would be very bad form for a customer to be going down car by car until they got the price that they need, okay? That they want, excuse me. <clears throat> if I'm going to be a mature service provider, then customers also have to be mature. And I would ask the customers, look at the calendar, it's 2017. I've been a taxi driver for 20 years, and currently, the majority of us who work in 6th Street in El Paso are still charging 12-year-old prices. Now, having said that, I see what taxi drivers do, and I don't like their attitudes. I don't like the way they treat the customer. If you're having a problem, then you're welcome to look for me, and I'll try to do the best that I can to provide you with good service at a fair price. My attitude is very simple. I go to have fun to enjoy myself to, uh, in any manner, you know, and it's according to my, uh, how I want to enjoy myself. I also understand that, that I want to win the customer over, you know, we're there every day and the majority of our customers are also regular customers and we need to respect them and work with them. So I'm not trying to take advantage of anybody. I'm not trying to be a difficult person. <clears throat> Currently I charge two two ninety five a mile. I don't charge for extra people as the old system required and I don't charge for luggage. I never understood why we needed to be charging for extra people and extra luggage. I understand it's weight, it costs on gas, but in reality if you just charge a certain price per mile you're set to go. I do have a $10 minimum that's from downtown. <clears throat> the least that a person will pay $10 and that's not negotiable. Again, I know my business, I've been in it for 20 years. I know what I need to charge. I know currently we're charging 12 year old prices. And just as, as a um, uh, helpful information, just to, so you'll have an idea more or less what you, you may pay, you know, from downtown to the airport, I charge uh, $30. 
okay from downtown to Piedra Street okay that's ten dollars and then somewhere in in mess and executive usually around fifteen dollars and then Dyer and Fred Wilson usually around twenty dollars okay and this is just to give an idea to the customer uh, downtown El Paso to Anthony is around fifty dollars Canutillo where the outlets are is around thirty dollars uh, Sunland Park Mall is around twenty dollars uh, the racetrack is around twenty dollars I mean the Silo Vista Mall is around twenty five dollars uh, I'll get a lot of trips to Jarbro and Mawood for the immigration office. That's thirty dollars, and these are twelve year old prices. This is what we were charging before uh, everything changed in August 9, twenty seventeen, in relation to taxis. We're not Uber; they just came in. <clears throat> I don't really think that Uber um, or, or even Lyft. Um, takes into account the ability of the driver to earn a living um, <clears throat> as long as they're getting theirs and part-timers <clears throat> who have employment somewhere else and just want to make extra money are probably comfortable with, with uh, the low what I call very low prices in, in Uber and Lyft <clears throat> excuse me um, but those of us who are you know, uh, Monday to Sunday, uh, dedicated to this profession. Uh, and I'm not dedicated. I'm not getting all that wired about it. It's just, just a taxi and, and money. This is not my life. I got other things going on. But if people, uh, it's been my. I know that if you give information to the public, the information that they can use to make uh, decisions, and I may want to purchase something at a very affordable price but if it doesn't exist it just doesn't exist and right now in the taxi industry and this is just a way means of information um, if you're traveling to El Paso Texas you're going to be you can find convenient taxi service right there at 6 El Paso Street if you're traveling through the airport there are taxis at the airport I don't work at the airport I'm not going to speak or recommend the taxi service at the airport. Every consumer should protect themselves and ask the right questions. And if they're comfortable with the information the driver has given them, they can make the decision to use that service. Um, and now this is by ways of information. One, one of the things that I would tell the consumer is the majority of us are still charging 12 year old prices. Um, I personally want to keep all customers happy. <coughs> Regular customers and customers maybe I won't, I'll only see one time. I go out to have fun, to listen to music, to watch movies, uh, eat food that I like, talk to the few people that I like to talk to, and and I have an uptight work day. Um, the consumer, I, I do believe in consumer rights and information, but just because we are willing to work with the public doesn't mean that we're we're going to uh, administrate our our uh, business in a manner where we're not making enough to live off of and as way of information <coughs> <coughs> again as long as the taxi driver's meter and fare card are consistent that a taxi driver is in compliant with the law most of us do negotiate with the customer we're not, we, we were constrained in the old system of having to charge the taxi meter. It's understandable not to charge more, but there was a time that those prices were 20 year old prices. But when you can't even charge less, I mean, this is business, business about competition. You know, okay, and I'm going beyond the scope of things, but just some fair information. Where I'm located at 6 El Paso. I start at 5 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. Um, there's taxi service at the airport. Two companies still use uh, dispatchers. You can look for them. These people, I don't work for them. They're not my friends. I'm not going to help them by giving them free, um, <clears throat> you know, free time here. Um, use your use your smart brain. You know, use your common sense. Um, do some work before you start. Where you're going to travel to? Where you want to be? 
Uh, you want to be near the airport. You know, you're going to an, into the an event at the university. You know, you want to find yourself a hotel <coughs> uh, near the university or near the airport or near the downtown area. There's not many downtown. You just have the name ones. The the what used to be the Camino Real, Double Tree, Hotel Express, not Hotel Express, Holiday Inn Express. All the other independents, um, I would not recommend because De Soto, uh, Gardner, nobody seems to have a problem with Gardner on Franklin uh, Avenue, uh, but used to be, for, it's been shut down so long that I've even forgot its name, no reason, reason to worry about it. Um, you have the Double Tree, you have the Holiday Inn Express, there's going to be a new one opening up, no, two new ones opening up, excuse me. There's something called the Indigo. I haven't the, idea, the slightest idea what kind of hotel that is. Now, restaurants in downtown El Paso, you're <laughs> you're putting your life in your own hands. It's up to you. Uh, you have McDonald's, churches, Burger King, but I hate to say it, uh, customer service in El Paso is just it's it's miserable. You, you're you're better off buying groceries and bringing food with you. Other than that, some general information on prices, on where you can find me, uh, where taxes are located. You can find um, taxis at two locations. They're in there in other locations, but they're small. Um, mostly concentrated in the airport and at 6th Street in El Paso. I think that's it. Got real good. All right.